Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we are doing a little bit of uh, maintenance, but fortunately a bit of maintenance that usually increases a little bit of performance. And that is to replace this high volume breather pipe. So this is an incredibly easy uh, task and a good one if you're a, oops, if you're a beginner with the maintenance and um, mechanicing on your car or uh, just want a quick easy job that doesn't cost very much. So this pipe um, enables the engine to suck because this is the air intake goes into the engine. It enables the engine to suck the oily fumes and vapors from inside the cam cover and in turn, hopefully, extract all the fumes from inside the rest of the engine. Um, that's partially an emissions thing, rebreathing its own gases and giving them another go at burning them. Um, but they go somewhere. Without that pipe, you'd start to pressurize the inside of your engine and you'd have oil leaking from everywhere. And it would get drawn very um, quickly into places that you don't want it being drawn. So it's an important bit of pipe work. Why is it important that it's in good condition from a performance point of view? Well, this is the air box, it's where your air filter is. This unit detects how much air is coming through from the air box and going to the throttle and therefore the engine. And that tells the car's brain how much fuel it's going to need to add because of the amount of air that is being put in. So as long as this detects the amount of air right, the engine will put in the right amount of fuel. This comes in after it's made that decision. And as long as this pipe is properly sealed and working how it should, that's fine. If it's got lots of holes in it, or it's detached, or the seal is broken, then what happens is this draws in, let's say, 10 units of air, and gets to here and is joined by another one unit of air, making now 11 units of air. That goes through to the engine, but the engine only puts in enough fuel for 10 units of air, because it doesn't know about this bit that is where it does its detection and the effect is that the engine would run lean or not enough fuel which can be fabulous for your fuel economy but will also cause all sorts of things like burning hot um, long term could damage your engine will damage your performance etc etc so this pipe's important there's several others that have the same effect and having this snorkel in good condition is one of them. Um, this should all be sealed as a system, no leaks, etc. These pipes are really brittle. The plastic that they were made of was not really good enough um, and the temperature of the engine bay eventually kills them. And you can see this one's already got tape wrapped around it and it's not self amalgamating tape, it's insulating tape which won't keep a seal for very long at all. So um, that's coming off and being replaced with my nice shiny brand new one, uh, a genuine Jaguar part. I'll put a link um, in the description below to one of the places you can get these. They're not stupid expensive, probably because they're practically a consumable part. So, how do we get it off? There's a clip on both ends, they're both the same. And all you've got to do is squeeze both sides of the clip at the same time on a little serrated part. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you the clip afterwards. Squeeze. And as you're squeezing, you're releasing it. And you should be able to wriggle it off. Now, if you were going to keep this pipe, you'd be very careful when you pull it off not to go and bend it. Because although it's supposed to flex, they get very brittle and break. That's one.
Come on. Two. And there we are. So that's the pipe I've just removed. And how it got removed, see the serrated parts on this clip? As you squeeze them, the other two sides get further away. And that's all that's holding it on. There's a couple of little barbs on there that grip the, um, the hose coming out of the engine. And the same on this end, just smaller. Squeeze the serrated parts and the other parts move away a little bit. Which also tells you if you're really struggling, you know, you just got to get your finger there and pull back. Um, or use something with a little bit of more power but you're not moving it very far only a little bit the rest of it is it's just stuck let's have a little look underneath this masking uh, masking tape insulation tape before we go any further it's as soon as I take it off I'm getting covered in oil So, that's all come off, and hopefully you can see that is where our air leak would be coming from. Now, first thing to say is, do not throw this away. Yes, in its current form, it's useless to you, and you want this. But what you'll be doing with this is, keeping it on your shelf, you'll be removing the plastic fittings, which I'll show you another time, and finding some hose to join those two fittings together to make yourself a spare. Because it doesn't have to be this serrated stuff. In fact, smooth tube's a better idea. Just in case of getting these off without damaging anything, and then you can replace this piece of pipe. So next, rag cover the end of the hole, uh, WD-40, any other similar general lubricant so that it's not going to contaminate anything and just clean that union. The cleaner the union, the better the seal will be. Next, we unbag our new part. I'm just going to keep the bag with the label so I can store the old part in it. Let's just compare for a moment. So, the new part is straight, obviously, it's flexible. The old one is formed because it's gone hard. Uh, next thing is, you look on the ends, the new part, which is this one, has a much narrower gap between the two sides that grip it. And this one is barely out of round. That's very obviously oval. So again, the age of the components means they just don't do as good a job as when they started. Fitting is simplicity itself. So you've got the two ends. Just push and that snaps really nicely into position. And this can rotate. So I suggest you it's a good idea to fit that one first. That way you can put a nice slow arc in this as you swing it into position and snap him in there. Job done. So there you are, a nice, quick, easy piece of maintenance 
that's probably improved my performance a little bit as well and all for a matter of a few pounds so definitely worth looking at there is the same type of hose but much longer much thinner on the opposite bank um, that's a story for another day i will replace that and show you how to do it but it's not as quick and easy as this one there you are uh, end of a, another quick episode if you enjoyed this please subscribe share with your friends and uh, we'll see you again on to the garage real soon